Well, uh, welcome, uh, welcome back to It's a Brain Thing tonight, uh, everyone. Um, tonight, uh, it's I, I, I'm glad that you guys showed up. I was a little surprised, actually, to see folks out here tonight. I, the topic, I figured, would not be a big draw tonight, but uh, what I decided to talk about is, uh, you know, in, in these talks, I do a lot of uh, speaking about the stigma that's associated with uh, brain illnesses and mental health, and mental illness and such. And the patients, uh, and how the patients are stigmatized, and the illnesses are stigmatized. But I haven't really mentioned a whole lot about the profession that treats the illnesses. Uh, and psychiatry is what we're going to talk about tonight. And um, there's several reasons for this. I think um, just to give you a couple of little humorous stories. As uh, being a psychiatrist, I have plenty of these humorous stories. But um, anytime I go into a uh, uh, social gathering and somebody finds out I'm a psychiatrist, you know, the first thing that they ask, the first thing that they say is, "Oh, I guess I better watch what I say then." as if I'm just going to parties to work. Um, so that's one thing. I think uh, another time that it became clear to me that uh, there's a lot of stigma about psychiatry is I went to a, a high school reunion, uh, and unfortunately there was a gentleman there that I think he was probably high on some type of drugs or something, but he was so paranoid that he kept he found out I was a psychiatrist, you know. And he kept coming up to me. I wasn't even paying attention to him. I didn't really know him very well in high school anyway. So I was just visiting with my friends. He kept coming up and saying, Oh man, you're analyzing me. I can tell. Just <laughs> looking at me, quit staring at me, you know. And again, as if I was there to work. So, uh, but he was pretty paranoid. And then, um, you know, I, the other thing that's it, it struck me is, you know, you see all these things, Tom Cruise, and you see all the stuff on the news about uh, people not really understanding psychiatry and psychiatric illness. Well, I had the same kind of thing with the YouTube uh, videos that I that I put out. I had one person comment from Canada. I don't know anything about them, but. Uh, basically, pretty extreme stuff about psychiatry. About I won't use the curse word they put, but that the video was full of you know what, and that uh, that I must have been brainwashed by some guru, and that all psychiatry must die. You know, so pretty extreme stuff. But you know, it basically drove home the, all these things. You know, drive home the message to me that that people don't really understand this, the profession of psychiatry any more than they do the illnesses and the and uh, the folks that have uh, brain illnesses which, by the way, can be any of us. And I don't think that the people that talk about these things realize that if they have a brain, they can suffer from these illnesses, too. So they got to watch what they say. But um, I think, um, you know, as you know, we, as, as we've talked about here before, people, we tend to stigmatize things we don't understand. And so if, 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 uh, if like throughout history, you know, in the biblical days, epilepsy was, was felt to be possession by the devil. Now we know the science behind it. It's actually a part of the brain that's, that's discharging when it shouldn't. It's, it's too much electri electrical activity, which then sometimes spreads throughout the brain and can cause epilepsy or seizures. Um, and schizophrenia used to be considered possession by the devil. I mean, uh, in those days, they didn't realize why somebody would be walking around talking to, you know, talking to themselves or talking to somebody that's not there. So that when they hallucinated, the patients would hallucinate or, or have uh, paranoia or something, you know, they, they figured, again, it was possession by the devil. And now, you know, we know better than that. So the idea is the more you learn, like, for instance, as the science developed, then we started not to discriminate against epilepsy, and, and uh, we still, still discriminate against schizophrenia, but we still we understand it better, and we're starting to get a little bit better about not doing so. Um, and, I, you know, I think that was sort of the goal of these talks, really, is is I don't think anybody's really out there, at least not too many people are out there, talking about the brain and the current science of the brain. And so the goal of the talks was to get that knowledge out there with the, with the goal of hope, hopefully you know, be, there being less stigma towards the, the illnesses and towards the folks that have the illnesses, but tonight, obviously, to also uh, get rid of some of the stigma by increasing knowledge about the field of psychiatry and, and, uh, um, and what, you know, what psychiatrists do. Um, in doing so, I'm kind of hoping that, in doing all this education and everything, I'm kind of hoping that people will, well, number one, they'll they'll not be as fearful to seek treatment if they need it. Um, that hopefully the folks that need treatment, that these things, these symptoms and things will, will be in, in sort of more understood and people will, will figure these things out and pick up these things early enough that, that, when, that then people can get into treatment earlier. Which, like any other type of illness, the earlier you get treatment, the better with these things. Um, and, and ultimately, I have a little grandiose uh, um, idea behind these talks is that if enough people see these things and learn about these things, that we might be very, that you'd be a little bit better at paying attention to, uh, to child development and, and how our kids are developing emotionally, um, because that will have an ultimate effect on society, I think. And, uh, you know, I think that obviously isn't going to be just done by me, but if more people that, that 
have the knowledge or are out there spreading it, that, that would be a good thing. Um, you know, there's still, the stigma is still there when it comes to these illnesses, like, like uh, and come, when it comes to psychiatry. So I still routinely have patients say, you know, I didn't come in for a long time, doc. I, I thought about it, I thought about it, but I didn't want to come in because I thought it meant I was crazy. You know, I, I hear that every single day. Almost every patient tells me that. You know, they also, they, they, there's also a lot of big fear of what happens when they come to see me. What am I going to do? What am I going to say? Am I going to shrink their head? Whatever that means. Um, and obviously the, the you know, uh, comments that people make, you know, about, uh, like, like for instance, I had a, a, in medical school, and this was another physician, believe it or not, I was doing transplant surgery, and this transplant staff, staff physician, st staff surgeon that was a transplant surgeon, asked me one day, what kind of doctor do you want to be? And when I told him I would like to be a psychiatrist, he, he kind of chuckled and he said, well, you should become a real doctor. So, you know, the stigma is even there amongst other doctors, you know. Now, he's probably not representative of all of the doctors. I think most other doctors have a better understanding of, of, psychi of psychiatry and what we do. Uh, in his case, I, I sort of felt bad a little bit for his patients because he obviously had no clue about any of this stuff. And, you know, transplant patients go through an awful lot. There's a lot of emotional things that would, that would, uh, that would affect them. So tonight, you know, I've titled this talk, Psychiatry, the Science of Where the Mind and Body Meet, because that's kind of truly what psychiatry is, you know. And, and I guess the first thing to, right off the title, the first thing to, to discuss with you is what is a psychiatrist? What do we go through and what kind of training do we have? Um, and th the first thing to realize is that this, beyond high school, okay, obviously we have to graduate high school. Once we get through high school, um, psychiatrists uh, uh, have to go through college. Um, and that's four years. So four years of, usually four years of college. Through the college, you can major in anything you want. I, I had a friend who majored in history and still went on into medical school, okay? So you can major in anything you want, but you do have to have a bare minimum of science classes, you know, calculus, physics, chemistry, these, these things. And in, in my, in my, for my medical school, it was 90 hours, 90 credit hours that we had to have pre-medical classes. So, um, you know, so that's, that's the first thing is the four years of college. Um, once you get through the four years of college, you kind of have to have decent grades. I'm not going to say you have to have straight A's. Um, you know, your GPA has to probably be at least a B average, I would say. I don't think you could get into medical school with just a, with a C average, but a B average at least probably. Um, you know, and then you have to do a, a college entrance exam. It's called the MCAT. And it's sort of like, you know, like when kids take SATs to get into college. This is sort of like the same thing, except it's all based on, it's, it's a lot of science and, and other things. And again, your scores have to be pretty good on that. They don't have to be perfect, you know, but they have to be pretty good. So the combination of good grades, good scores on this test, and then an interview. You have to pass an interview, of course. Um, so once you do all those things, then you, then you are, if there's enough positions, you get accepted into a medical school. And medical school then is four years after college. So I did uh, four years at Purdue University, and then I did four years of, of medical school at Indiana University, believe it or not. I know that's quite a conflict there for a lot of people, but... Uh, I'm still a Purdue fan at heart because the first four years was at Purdue. Um, the first two years of medical school is kind of, it's, it's similar to college, it's just more advanced. There's a lot, you're learning an awful lot of stuff and it's all focused, of course, on the human, you know, human body and, uh, and you know, physiology and, and all this. We actually have cadaver lab where we go in and do, you know, dissect the human cadaver so we can learn all about the body and the brain and everything. Um, so that kind of breaks up the classes a little bit. So those first two years, it's a lot of test taking in classrooms, sitting in classrooms like you guys are doing out there tonight. You know, you listen and you know, you take notes and all this, just like college, but more advanced. After that first two years, you have to take a set of board exams, and that's kind of a big deal. Those things are really kind of tough to pass. Once you pass those board exams, you get to go on into your third and fourth year of medical school. Um, third and fourth year is not so much sitting there listening to lectures and all that. So you actually start going into the hospital, you rotate with residents and staff doctors, and you learn, and you start to learn about all that. You rotate through all the different major areas of medicine. So you may spend four to six to eight weeks doing surgery, doing OBGYN, doing you know, family practice, internal medicine, pediatrics, you know, all these the different specialties, psychiatry. Um, and then by the fourth year of medical school, you're, you're kind of you're supposed to have seen enough that you narrow down what you really like to do to two or three different uh, possible areas of medicine, and then you take some electives in those areas. And then by the end of the fourth year of medical school, another set of board exams, 